So guys, I think we didn't do a YouTube video on Vine, no. did we? No, okay. but if they follow us on TikTok, they know. Okay, so check out some videos on on our TikTok about, uh, I guess back in, when did we order these boots, Mario? In uh, February. February the 19th, we ordered these. I came in and ordered boots. So Mario's been building boots for me for a while. He keeps all of them, so, you know, this... You know, this is a pair that he built for me back in November of 2004, a pair in December of 08, a pair in March of 20, and then a pair in February that we ordered. So uh, Mario had them, got them ready. So just a little bit about the process. Mario takes a drawing of your foot. You stand up here and he, he traces your foot around. I had a lot of people ask me on the last video, Mario, is what, yes, I'm like, why didn't you stand up and he, why doesn't he measure your foot standing up instead of sitting down? So, why, why do we, do, why do you do it this way? Well, every boot maker got the, you know, their way. They're all in style to, to measure the foot. You right. know? A lot, um, some people, they, they, they measure the foot while you stand up. I like, you know, measure the foot with, with you, you sit down okay because you don't have any weight on your feet pressure yeah too, too much pressure and you can uh, make a mistake making the list you know right so, so you you put the extra lax when I take your measurement right so when I make the, the mold the measurement which is gonna be the right so like Mario said, every bootmaker has their own way and he likes to do it that way. So um, so from these measurements, then he makes a last, which is a, just basically a replica of your foot. And I like a square toe, so that's why I square it off like this. So everywhere that there's a mark on this paper, he makes another mark across here and measures to make sure that he gets it all just right. And then from there, he makes starts to make the boots. So this pair of boots, I guess they'll start like this, right Mario? Yes, sir. So he'll cut these pieces out. This is the liner and then this is the outside. And then he'll sew the fronts together like such. Mario hand stitches all this on his sewing machine and then this will be the back. Yeah, the back of the wood. I mean, it, it's gonna be like that. Front and back. There'll be a piece of piping in here. Um, I'm gonna yeah. take these boots off that Mario made for me and show y'all. So, so when he puts those together, there'll be a piece of piping here. Yeah, where they connect. Yeah, and uh, then then they'll be stretched over the last, right? Yes, sir. And then uh, all of his magic gets done. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but he'll put the soles in it and everything like that. And when they're finished, you pull the last out and finish off the boot. So these are elephant with just uh, calf skin on the top. Calf skin, yes, sir. A turquoise calf skin on the top. This is called a toe flower. Now this is the Jones toe flower, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. This was from Mr. Jones at Lampasas. He built boots when? From like the, maybe the 40s to the, the 80s, 80, 80, somewhere 83. He quit, he, he quit in 83? Yes, so sir. you never worked for Mr. Jones, did you? No, my dad did. But your dad did, yes, right. Sir. So. Uh, Mario, I guess you would be a second generation bootmaker. Yes, your sir. dad and then you. My dad and then me. Um, so this is reminiscent of the old Jones toe flower. He was at a Um We're in Central Texas, so anybody that knows anything about handmade boots, if they see that, they'll know. There's only a few makers that use this anymore, yes. right? Yes. Um, so, so some of the guys that are have come out of that Jones era bootmaking know how to do that toe flower, and, and Mario put that on there for us, so it makes it look nice. Um, as a kid, I remember my my granddad, my uncle, my dad, my mom even having a pair of Jones boots. So that's that's really special to me that Mario put that on there, and he's done it on a couple of other pairs. Normally, we wouldn't put that on a pair of elephant boots, but Mario tried it on a on a sample here just to see how it would work, and it worked out good. So he went ahead and stuck them in there for us. Yeah, the the stitching on the top, so the padding on the top, is by the. They're Ray Jones too. That's a Ray Jones. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We put those on uh, on this on, uh, So the, this yeah. has three rows of stitching yeah, on the top. It does. This is just one row of stitching. Well, I'm working on the other. Oh, I've got some more to put on there. Yeah. Okay. 
the boots that he made for me have three rows of stitching and then he inlaid my brand in the front here and then we've got some side pulls on here I like finger holes instead of the side pulls it makes it easier for me to get them on so um, but most of all the best part about a pair of handmade boots is the first time you put them on they just slide right in there's no break in they're built to fit your foot identical to the way your foot shaped so if one foot's a little bigger or a little smaller when when Mario builds them they're gonna fit just right so um, well they're perfect. I appreciate it, Mario. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We'll see you again in a couple of years, and probably. We've got uh, a new location. Oh, new yeah. location. Yeah, Mario did move. Um, he used to be out on Highway 84, headed out of town. Now he's moved into town here. Um, do you want to give? Do you have a phone number or an address? Yes, sir. It's uh, 107 Oak Lane Drive. 107 Oak Lane Drive, Gatesville, Texas, 76528. Telephone number is 254-216-5842. So 254-216-5842. And that's Mr. Medina here. Um, now keep in mind, when you if you decide to order a pair of boots, that you're probably, what, about a year out now? Yes, sir. More Maybe than 18 than months? Yeah. You know, these, aren't, these, these are built one at a time, custom built to your foot, and there's other people ahead of you in line. So, um, you know, it's not a rush deal. So just keep that in mind. But if you're interested, give Mr. Medina a call, and he'll. Uh, I highly recommend him. Like I said, he's built. I think there's actually a couple of pairs of boots in here that aren't on this because we took some bottoms and put new tops on them. Yes. Yeah. Or, or we took some tops and put new bottoms on them. Yeah. And, and so we call it a refoot. Yeah. We use the 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 tops, the old tops, and put the new bottoms. New bottoms on. So there's a couple of those in here, but um, yeah. they're more like a five. Five or six. Right. You have to Perfect. dig out your old ones when we get home. Yeah. We have them. We have them all stored in a box. Yeah. Some of them, like one pair, is been refooted, so yeah. it's, it's the same set of tops, but on the second pair of boots. So the first pair of boots, I don't think they're in here. Maybe maybe this is them. I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure this is them. So this pair of boots right here because was mule hide, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, mule hide with a light green calf top. That was the first set of steers that I ran through the feed yard. And when I sold them, I used a portion of that money to buy this pair of boots. Oh, okay. So you remember you, you mama, she bring you when you was uh, graduating? Yeah, when I was graduating. Yeah. And uh, But you didn't have time to build them then, that, that pair. Mm -hmm. So Mercer out of... Uh, San Angelo built me a pair, but when I graduated from college, you built you built or, or the in two years after I graduated that pair you built for me was when I sold that load of steers in the in in the feedlot in Kansas, and uh, I yeah. bought my first leather sewing machine from Mr. Mario here, um, and you bought it back or you sold it to another person, yeah, another lady that was looking to get into some sewing with a leather sewing machine, so. Um, so Mr. Medina has been pretty instrumental in that. He helped me get started there, and he built my boots for me. So I want to say something. Um, when you get a one uh, custom-made boots, they they gonna be unique. Nobody else in the whole world is gonna have another pair, right? Like yours. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, when they if you know, like I wear like an eleven and a half double E, but Anybody that wears that boot, if they slid my boot on today, it's not going to fit their foot, is it? No. It may, they'll, they'll feel something different because if you've got a little bump on your side of your foot or you've got, if you're, like I don't have, I have really flat feet, so Mario, what size, do you still use a nail like a? Oh yeah, they're, they're, they're the what size are, are they? Uh, it's uh, 60... 60 penny. 60 penny nail. Yeah. So it's about the size of what? Uh, oh, um, uh, about the size of the. So a nail, maybe yeah. a little bigger than that. Yeah, maybe a little bigger. Maybe just a little bit bigger around yeah. than a pencil. He bends that to go in your arch right there for the arch support. Yes. Sir. Huh. So even if you're a big old boy like me and you wear an extra medium shirt. <laughs> You're not going to break down the arches in your boots because 
Mr. Medina is going to bend that to fit just right. So, so like me, if I stay on my feet all day with regular shoes, since I'm flat-footed, my feet start to hurt, my back starts to hurt. But when Mr. Medina builds that arch in there for me, it, it's like normal people. You have it's it's better for your foot that way. Um, you know, if you got toes that are spread out or tight, I mean, when you get a pair of custom boots, they're made to fit your foot, um, not anybody else's. So, and then there's show, show them the different colors back here. There's endless color options that you can choose. You know, um, this is black elephant, gray elephant. This is the same color elephant that's on my boots. Um, I have a pair of elephants that are this color. Um, you've got mule hides. Where are your mule hides at? Down here? Uh, right there. Yeah. Mule hide, which is an excellent boot uh, choice to make boots out of. It's very tough. Um, does good. Then you've got all these different color options for tops. We've got pig skin. Pig skin. Uh, probably got some. This is uh, bull hide here, right? Yes, sir. Different bull colors hide. of bull yeah. hide. What's this, caiman or something like uh, it's that? It's uh, alligator. Alligator. You might even have some stingray in here somewhere. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Um, Ostrich. I mean, a bootmaker can get any type of leather to make your boots out of. So, like, here's a piece of stingray. Oh, that's cool. So, if Mario made a pair of boots, this this little white spot where the stingray is would be on the on your on your tip. Yeah. On the Tell center, on where the toe flower is, or up on your arch? Yes, sir. Where would it be on the toe, or up? Would uh, you put it up here? Right there. About right there. So, so that's the way it. That's yeah. what I need. Wow, you don't got so, me. So, and then you can pick whatever color. You know, you can say, "Man, I love this brown. I want to run it with a with a with a brown top." Or you might say, "Man, I want a I want a bright yellow top on that for my boot." And it, you know. You, you get to pick what it looks like. Then you get to customize the even the stitching color on the top of it. What color you want the stitching to be. You can have your brand or your initials. One pair of boots you made for me. I think that very first pair. You had your initials. They had have, they have more than that. They had a... Uh, yeah. They had, my, they had the Bar 7 brand in the front. And then they had a CA on the, yeah. on the outside. So that if you had my, if I had my britches legs tucked in, you could see my initials on the outside. So there's all kinds, but of course, keep in mind, the more you customize, the more it costs, right? Because yes. that's extra work that Mr. Medina has to do. So, um, and keep in mind too, guys, this is something that's very important. Because they are handmade specific for you, they're not like buying a pair of boots at Cavenders or Boot Barn or something like that. But they're going to last a lot longer. They're going to be more comfortable and uh so, so just keep that in mind. Don't don't call Mr. Medina and say, "Hey, well, I thought I was going to get a pair of boots for two hundred bucks," because that don't even get started on a, on a pair of handmade custom boots, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I'll, any price, and I'm going to leave up to Mr. Medina. If y'all want to want to talk to him about a pair of boots, you can give him a holler. You will have to come to Gatesville and so that he can measure you. There, he doesn't send out any kind of boxes or let you take your own measurements. And the reason for that is is. He, he's going to stand beside behind his boots, yes. and if somebody, if you make a, a wrong measurement, and he builds it to fit your measurements, and you're not happy, you're going to be mad at him, even though he did it right. So, if he takes the measurements and he builds the boots, and, and for some reason your foot changed and it doesn't fit, I mean, he's going to make it right. But as long as, but he wants to measure them himself. So, um, guys, give him a, give him a shout. It's awesome. Again, thank you, Mario. Yes, sir. Thank Pleasure. you. Pleasure doing business again. I appreciate Thank it. you. Maybe one of these days we'll let Erica order a pair. Yeah, of those right I there. Kind of doubt it. Whatever. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, t show me all your boot collection, Cody. Okay, so I don't know where this is going to fall in Erica's boot video at the end or the beginning or what. Probably the end. Probably the end. So this is my collection of handmade boots. These are, this is not all of them, but this is the ones that Mr. Medina has made for me, Mario's made. So this pair. It's the second pair of boots he ever made for me, but it's actually the first pair of tops. So this pair of tops was the first pair of boots I ever ordered from Mario. Um, it's got my initials on the outside of each boot and then my brand in the middle. And when these boots, the original bottoms that were on them, so the toe and everything wore out, I had Mario just reuse the tops and make me a new set of bottoms. So. That's uh, that's the first and second, I guess, pair of boots that Mario ever made. So those are, 
these are bull hide. Looking at the leather I on I thought you didn't like bull hide. Well, I don't really prefer it, but that's what he had then. These are, the, I guess, the third pair he made. They just have my initials in the front, no, uh, or my brand in the front, no initials on them. They're a maroon top with a bull hide bottom. You can see here that they, I finally wore a hole in the side of them. And uh, they held up pretty good. I mean, these boots were built in, I think, 2000, maybe four or something like that, four or five. I'm not real sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I thought you got them right when we first started dating. Maybe so. The, I the original bottoms, so that would have been like 2005. 2005, yeah. So I don't know how old they are. Um, <clears throat> this pair of boots I ordered right before Clancy was born, I believe. Because I got he was a baby when I got them. Um, these are yellow topped, obviously, with uh, I don't know what color you call that down there at the bottom, but that's ele this is elephant. Um, these are your going out boots. These are my dress boots. Yeah, weddings, funerals, that kind of stuff. Why you had to say funerals? <laughs> Church. These I ordered on my 40th birthday, so these are two years old. They've never had anything done to them. Um, it's getting about time if you look at the heel caps to have new heel caps put on. Right here, you can see I walk on the outside of my feet, so it's wearing that down. Um, again, maroon top. These are mule hide on the bottoms. Um, you can see that Jones toe flower on every pair except for the elephant. He didn't want to do that on this first pair of elephants. Um, and then these are the pairs that I ordered this year. These, these saw are earlier in the video. Also elephant, um, but he, he, he did a, a practice, like we talked about, a practice toe flower on a scrap piece and it turned out good, so he went ahead and put it on these. Wasn't really expecting to see a toe flower, um, but I'm glad they're there because it just gives it that, that appeal that you know that they're a handmade boot when you see that, um, this particular toe flower. Um, another pretty good indicator, it used to be very common even now, shop built home or you know, like commercial made boots or having them, but used to you could always sell a pair of handmade boots because they always had white piping. So I always get white piping put on a, put on my boots. It makes them look look a little dressier. Um, so every one of these boots is basically going to fit the same. I mean, when I pull them on, um, this pair is just they're not tight, um, but I don't ever wear them enough to keep them really like they need to be, but. These guys and these guys, I mean, they just slip right on you, just no, no effort at all. I always like to get the finger holes in them instead of pulls. Makes it easier just to grab them and pull them on when you need to put them on. Um, I have big calves, mainly from carrying the weight of the world most of the time. But, um, oh my gosh. So, the, the, you know, when you get a pair of shop made boots, handmade boots, they're going to measure your calf and make, make sure your tops are big enough to, to fit in around your calves good. Um, one thing you might notice on these, I've got some, so I have a, I think it's just a slight allergic reaction to leather sometimes. I don't, I don't know if it's leather, I don't know what it is, but so right here, every pair of boots I've ever owned, they'll rub the inside of my calf just a little bit. And Mario's done some stuff to make these bigger, but I think they're gonna do it too. It's just, it just does, and, it, and it's not bad, but it irritates it enough that it makes it itch, and then I scratch it, and it makes it raw. So I've put these little pieces of sock on here before uh, when these when I was wearing these to keep them from rubbing me. A lot of times now I've started buying knee-high socks, and I don't really like wearing them, but it, it helps a whole lot. Or I just tuck my britches legs in. Um, that's my favorite way to wear them. Not because I'm punchy or anything like that. It just <laughs> it keeps them from rubbing my legs. But um, So that's my boot collection, guys. Um, yes, homemade or handmade boots are expensive, but when you get two or three years of use out of them, I mean, these were wore, wore every day in, in a feedlot environment, standing in, in urine and fecal matter all the time, poop all the time in a feedlot. Um, I don't walk around mud holes, I walk through them. So, I mean, they, they, they are abused and they last way longer than just a regular pair of, of boots you buy at the store. I mean, um, these are all your boots that you've ever had for the last since 2005. Well, I've had a couple of pair of, we got some free ones from some farmers. Yeah, but you, those were that, mainly just you wore them dressy because they're yeah, black. They but, um, you know, I've, I've had a few just like Ariat pull on boots and, and they lasted well, they did good, but um, these are my favorite way to go. And, 
you know, you don't have to go, I mean, this isn't the most expensive boots you can buy, but they're, they're, they're too high that I shouldn't have paid what I paid for them. <laughs> they're worth it, but we didn't need to spend that kind of money. I was a bad influence. I should not go with them to the um, boot you maker. Know, you get something like this, it's still expensive compared to a, a store-bought boot, but you know, they're very affordable for what you get out of them. So I like them if you're ever in the, in the market for one and you got a, a local boot maker, you want to look up Mr. Medina, Eric will have the stuff down in the, down below as contact information. So give him a shout. Keep in mind, I think I've already said this, but it, it does take some time. I mean, he's probably 12 to 18 months out on getting you a pair of boots made. So be patient with him and uh, y'all keep ranching. Tell us your favorite boots in the comments below if you've ever had a handmade boots. Yeah, who's your favorite boot maker if yeah. you've had custom boots? Yeah. Um, and yeah, what's your, what, I, I would like to know this, of all the boots here, what's your favorite color pattern? Which one do you like the best? Um, I will show them, we can show them your deal over here if you want to. So I don't have all, I did for a while when I first got out of college, I had some uh, a fellow out of San Angelo made me some boots, uh, Mercer and Sons out of San Angelo. So this was the, this was probably the third pair of boots they made me. I think the first pair was yellow topped. These were turquoise, that stands for Cody Archie. The second pair they made me, this is actually the pair of boots that I graduated from Texas A&M in. Um, they were purple topped with yellow stitching. Um, I made this into a wallet for Erica. And Kylie made something out of one of these pairs for something. Is this the one she... I think she made that one. Did she make that one? Yeah, I think she made that one. I don't remember. Yeah, oh, because we got some yeah. yeah. So Kylie made this. Yeah, yeah Kylie I helped made Kylie that make one. this. That's yeah. right. Because we had to cover it up and have my name written in it right there, and we had to glue it over it. So Yeah. Um, Too many but, projects. you know, when, they, when you wear them out, you don't, you don't have to get rid of them. You can, you can turn them into other things. I turned it into a purse for Erica. And Kylie built that wallet. Um, one thing I did with a couple of pair of my old boots, uh, probably the green top ones, or some yellow, the yellow top ones, I think, that came before that. You can cut them off right here and stitch them. Oh, and it, yeah. it makes a, it makes a good bag to put on your saddle. So when I was riding a lot in Docker and Kev's, I did that with a pair of boots. You can, I just sewed in a little deal on the back and I forgot you just put you a little did strap that. through there to close it up so you could keep, you know, chalk and extra needles, extra syringes and stuff like that on your back girt. So that's it guys, that's all I got. All right, y'all keep ranching. Keep ranching.